When you have a look at the, the first four seals of uh, Revelation, and in Revelation chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8, and you then parallel that with Matthew 24, verse 4 to 8, you see that Jesus was referring um, when the disciples asked him, what will be the sign of the end and the sign of your coming? And those things that Jesus mentions in Matthew 24, verse 4 to 8, uh, tie in perfectly with the first four seals of Revelation 6, verse 1 to 8. And we see the first seal is opened and a rider on a white horse comes out. And so we see white as a sign of, of peace. And the Antichrist comes with a false or pseudo peace. And we read in the book of Daniel chapter 8 that he in fact conquers through peace. Which is quite remarkable because that's why the rider has a bow, but he has no arrows. So he's, he goes forth conquering and to conquer, but yet he does it through peaceful means. Uh, not through through war. That's why there are no arrows in, involved. And when you consider this and the account in Matthew 24, the very first thing that Jesus says to the disciples in verse 4 is, see that no man deceives you, because there will be false Christs. Deception is the thing we ought to be looking out for at this time. He also mentions deception four times in that in that chapter. And so the Antichrist uh, deceives people through false peace, uh, signs a, a, a peace treaty and brings a supposed unity among all the, the nations. He confirms this covenant, covenant. Now Daniel 9 verse 26 and 27 also confirm this. The, the second seal is opened and everything changes. So from a white horse and peaceful means, suddenly it's a fiery red horse. Now we know that uh, the dragon is that great red dragon referred to in the book of Revelation. And so from a state of peace, all of a sudden now the rider has a huge sword in his hand. And he takes peace from the earth. He starts with peace and then he removes the peace. And the scripture then says uh, that then people begin to kill one another. And so we see this incredible violence break out in the world. And uh, like Matthew puts it, um, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be wars. And so we see warfare breaks out. And so... Clearly, the purpose of the Antichrist is not for a prolonged peace. Uh, he uses that to conquer, but now his true colors uh, begin to show. And so there is warfare that takes place, and many, many people begin to lose their life because his purpose is global domination. He wants to be God. The third seal is opened, and a black horse comes up with a rider. And when you think of black, I just think of a very, very dark time. And so the world being plunged into warfare now face the darkest time uh, before uh, the, the serious persecution actually begins to unravel. And this rider, he comes out with a balance in his hand, a scale. And so we see a global food crisis. And that's how the Antichrist ultimately is going to control the people. We know that you can't buy or sell without having received his mark. Now, uh, we given this description concerning how desperate things will be, and basically your basic food products are going to be sold for exorbitant prices. But Jedi says, don't, don't harm the, the oil and the wants. So in other words, luxury items will still be available. So the, the super wealthy, life will continue as normal. But for the average person, and primarily the poor, 
of which are the majority of the population of the globe, are going to be plunged into massive, massive hunger and starvation. And so we, we then see coming out of this, and obviously Matthew 24 and verse 7, he talks about the wars and the earthquakes, pestilences, and he says there'll be famines. And so it ties in with this, this global food crisis. And then the fourth seal and the last horse that rides out is a pale horse. A pale green horse, some translations say. And so speaking of death, the rider is called death. And Hades follows him. He has given authority over one quarter of the world's population. One quarter of the world's population. Currently, that is two billion people that will be killed by the sword, through famine, through disease, and wild animals. And so Matthew 24, um, when you read there, talks about death that is going to come upon the globe. Now, these are horrendous things. And I believe that this is just the introduction to the last days scenario, this, this apocalypse. As Matthew puts it in verse, uh, verse 8 of chapter 24, he says, or well, Jesus speaking says, these are just the beginning of sorrows. And then we see a violent persecution against believers. And then Jesus makes a statement, he that endures to the end will be saved. And so I believe that we get to see these very events. Now, I've considered this in the light of what we're currently facing with the, with the whole COVID uh, scenario playing out around the world and people are living in fear and it's wreaked havoc upon uh, all the nations in terms of financially and many people have lost their jobs and we've got young, young children in our own country having to eat plants just to stay alive. But to the church, a challenge. If, if you've been shaken through COVID, how are you going to survive these first four seals? How are you going to make it? This is before even Christian persecution comes. This is just the, the rise of the Antichrist. Um, when the Spirit of God begins to allow the, uh, the, the, the globalists to bring about their ultimate uh, agenda. And these things start to play out. Where is it going to leave us as believers? So my challenge to the church, now's the time to arise. Now's the time to wake up. Now's the time to be strengthened. Now's the time more than ever before to be persuaded. But now's the time to be filled with the Spirit of God on a daily basis. Because it's, it's the Spirit that's going to give us power to endure. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to give us the comfort, that's going to lead us into truth, that's going to keep us from the deception. It's, it's the Holy Spirit who is, who is the one who will, will be with us, leading and directing us, pointing us to, to Jesus. We cannot afford at this time. And at this time, if you're growing cold and you become weary, and my great concern through this whole COVID thing is that many believers are not meeting, they're not gathering. And it's a huge concern because we're not going to grow in our faith. We're not going to be strengthened in our bonds of love. And so I want to encourage every believer in Jesus. Find yourself at the feet of Jesus. Fellowship with brothers and sisters. Get together. Don't forsake the gathering of yourselves as the manner of some is, as the book of Hebrews teaches. It's time for us to gather unto Jesus. It's time for us to be strengthened and it's a time for us to prepare for what is about to be unleashed upon this planet because these things are coming. Trouble is on its way and, and it's about he who endures to the end. It's that one that is going to be saved.